this one. Saturate it. Saturation. And we've basically been talking about being saturated with the life, spirit of God. We begin by reading from John chapter 7, uh, verses 37 through 39, where Jesus says uh, that anyone that thirsted, was thirsty to come unto him and drink. And we mentioned that uh, it's a conjunction there. First of all, come to Jesus and, and then drink. So it, we said that you, we could come to him, but then may not drink or receive what he's wanting to give us. We mentioned that they're in a present tense, which means that there's no one time you can come and end it all. Now, you, yes, you can get born again. We understand that. But you have to have a fresh coming to Jesus as a person of Jesus. Jesus wants to constantly meet you. Amen? He wants to constantly have encounters with you. And as he meets with us, he wants us to drink or consume what he has to offer us. Now, as you go on in John 37, through 39, it says that this, he spoke about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. In other words, the Holy Spirit had not been given in a dimension that he was given in Acts chapter 2, and we'll eventually get there, uh, because Jesus had not yet been glorified or exalted. So after Jesus was glorified or exalted after the resurrection, he was exalted, meaning that uh, the, the disciples, the early apostles saw him, in a cloud, he departed, and he says, the way you saw him depart, he will come again. Well, obviously, he has been exalted. The Bible declares that he has been highly exalted. He's at the right hand of the Father. And because Jesus is exalted now, then the Holy Spirit has free access to he be released in the earth to all people that are ready to receive him. All right? Now, we, we tie that in with Acts chapter 1. Verse 5, where it says that when Jesus was talking to his disciples or the apostles before he departed, he told them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to remain there. And he told them that uh, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And he says, not many days from now, from the time that I'm talking to you. Now, we spent some time about uh, baptism, what the word baptism really, literally means. Uh, the root word that it literally means to, to die. In other words, you, you put something, a fabric, into a particular uh, dye, and the fabric what T takes on what? The color and the substance of the dye. So when the Bible talks about being baptized in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit, it is talking about not, not you changing the Holy Spirit, but something that happening to you whereby you are changed. So when you are baptized into, remember last week, we said when you're baptized into, it also means the word baptism from word bapto or baptizo also means a cleansing, a, a drowning. It's the same word we uh, get when we talk about drowning a ship or overwhelming something with water. So we're saying when a person literally comes into the dimension of, of being baptized in the Spirit, and we're using it synonymously now, which saturated with the Spirit, there's a drowning that takes place. Something dies in you. Something dies in you. Something happens to you. There's a change in you. There's a life flow that's different in you. And uh, now that's, that's one event. The baptism is one time. But we're talking about a saturated lifestyle whereby folks that may have gotten baptized uh, in the Holy Ghost at one point in time, uh, that was the entry into the spirit world. You understand? That was the entry. That is not the stopping place. A lot of people when they got baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues, they made that the stopping place. That is simply the entry. That's the entry place. Just like when a baby is born into the world, uh,